Well, hello and welcome YouTube, it's Robinson back here with yet another brand new exciting video, all math based of course, and as always, it is an honor and a privilege to be serving you here today, as it is every day here in my virtual classroom. Alright, step on inside, and we are going to continue talking about things within circles, uh, before we were mentioning inscribed angles, and we're going to be doing something along the same nature of inscribed angles, as if you took, and I'll kind of show you, if you took an inscribed angle and kind of moved it around, so it's possibly no longer inscribed, but it's still the same angle, so how can you represent the angle given the new arcs that you have because it's no longer the same intercepted arc and that's what we'll get into um i like to do it that way because the formulas that we have all fall within that same uh junction now i haven't done these problems before yet so the ones that get a little complex looking i'll just strategize as i do i'll just say what i see and how we go from it outside of that problem i'm looking at the first four problems they look very samey as far as what you do do all depending on what it is they're asking you to solve for and i'm jump straight into them right here so the first four problems that we're looking at right here we have they're, they're asking us to find certain measures let me point out where it is and then what we're going to do with it find the measure of angle q p r right here now this angle is clearly not a central angle nor an inscribed angle it's not an angle on the circle or on the center it is somewhere in the circle not necessarily on that center what I want to do with you for a brief moment before we actually begin the problem, to know what to do with the problem in the future and the other problems, is let's look at it almost as if it was, I'm sorry about that, almost as if it was an inscribed angle. So I'm going to take this and just ignore the angle that you see right now and look at what I'm going to do with blue. Let's say I made it an inscribed angle right, just right there, right? We know that inscribed angles are half the measures of their intercepted arcs. So you look at this big intercepted arc right there and you say, all right, whatever this angle is, it's half of this. Not 98. The 98 is already shown from the original problem, but something that's now more than 98, right? It looks like it's more than 98. Um, so that intercepted arc right there. But now you see the angle here. You see it moved right here and you see that we lost some intercepted arc right there. But the truth is what happened is whatever we lost there, we actually grew right here. You see on this back end, this vertical angle pair, you know these are actually congruent to each other, but this vertical angle pair right here, what was lost there was actually found right here in red. This portion, this intercepted arc bit, is the bit that we, let me rotate it over, it's the bit that we actually lost right there. Um, now, when I say lost, I actually mean it's one we have to gain from our true problem that we're looking at right here so what i'm trying to say is the intercepted arc of this if it were inscribed the bigger one that intercepted arc is now represented in two places right here and right here and when you put them together through addition when you put them together it represents that bigger intercepted arc of an inscribed angle so again we know that the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc well now it's going to be half the sum of these two right here the measure of angle qpr the thing that we do not know equals half the measure of arc qr plus the measure of arc st and i'm not going to write this each time i'm giving you the idea of what's going on here this is a bit of a formula if you will so the measure of that angle will be half of 98 plus 31 and already they're going to get us in some decimal values. I hope you're okay with that. Half of 129, which is 129 over 2, which is 64.5 degrees. And I hope I calculated those things correctly to begin with because that is just the first problem of the day. But yes, that's what we're going to do here. When an angle is inside the circle, and by the way, these lines, this is a line here. You can call it a chord, but as it's a line that goes forevermore, uh, it's known as a secant line. A secant line is a line that intersects a circle twice. So two secant lines here and here, boom. <clears throat> to find the measure of one of these angles that they're going to ask us for, to find the measure of one of those angles, we got to take half the measure of its intercepted arcs. Arcs. So there's, a, there's one and another. All right, second problem right here. Find the measure of angle A, B, C. Now that's this guy here. Now here's the bitter and honest truth. We don't know... Sorry about that. We don't know this measure right here, and we don't know this measure right here. We can't assume that they're congruent either. We do know the measures of these arcs right here, though. We do know 145. By the way, I think my phone, hold on. My phone, I got a text, and I, I don't think I'm on vibrate right now. So let me uh, figure this thing out here. All right. And I just noticed I got an email. Uh, it's school stuff, school stuff, guys. Sorry about that. 
Anyway, we know these two intercepted arcs, which means we could easily find this angle or this angle right here as they are congruent. Let's just say the measure of angle ABD. Now I'll show you two different ways to do this problem and you can decide which way you like more as a result of what I'm doing. They'll essentially be the same thing. Measure of angle ABD is half the measure of the sum of 145, just like we did in the last problem there. So that's going to be half of 145 which is 72.5 degrees. Now that's not ABC. ABC is actually a linear pair to ABD right there, right? These two form to make a straight angle. This plus this is 180 degrees, right? The measure of angle ABC plus 72.5 equals 180. So if you subtract 72.5 from both sides, you get the measure of angle ABC is uh, I don't know, uh, 107.5. I don't know. I'm going to do a lot of this without a calculator. I apologize. As long as you're getting the idea of what's going on, you use the calculator on your own, right? Solution guide video is not meant to say, here's the answer. Otherwise, I just give you the answers. It's meant to say, how do you approach it? Um, now, the second way you can do that problem right there is, you know, I may not know what one of these are separately, but the goal, the whole intent of this thing, if I want to find this angle, is that it's equal to half the sum of both of these together, right? So I don't care what one of them are, I just care what both of them are together. So measure of angle ABC alternatively is half the sum of the measure of arc AC and the measure of arc DE right there. Now again, we don't know what they are separately, but together we should know what they are because these two add to 145 degrees and the rest of it should be the rest of what 360 is, right? So this should be half of 360 minus 145 right there. And that's where we get to the number that is double that of 107.5, I'm guessing 215. So yeah, half of 215 degrees, which gets you right back there. So it's the same thing. The difference is we did 360 minus the intercepted arc instead of half of 360, which is 180 minus the... Um, the uh, inner, uh, let's see, what, what was 72.5? Oh, minus the angle, minus the angle of this guy right here. Depends on whether you were still looking at the arcs or whether you were looking at the angles and whether you were still double the thing or half the thing at the time. Okay. All right. Number five, more of the same here, finding the measure of angle M, K, J. So, uh, you know, we just did both example, both versions last time. I don't know which one you more preferred. Why don't we do the uh, second one we just did here? Just do one of them. Let's take these two and add them together. Uh, 38.5 plus 51.5, and that gives me 90, I think. And 360 minus 90 is 270. Now, why did I get 270? Because the measure of angle MJK is this guy right here, and it's gonna be half the measure of this plus this. You know what this plus this is? It's 270. It's everything that's not 360, excuse me, it's everything that's not these guys that makes the 360. So the measure of angle MKJ is actually half of 270. Yes, that is the addition of both those things. I don't know if I'm diving as much in that formula the way that you want to see me do it, but I did add these two up. And that whole idea was kind of provided in a different way. So that's going to work. That's going to work. It's all about, see, it's not about, do you know a formula? It's all about, do you understand this? <laughs> do you understand what's going on in the problem? All right, uh, last one, the measure of angle NPK right here. Now let's go into that other form that we just did. They seem to go off of the easy one that we tried, you know, off the one that's based on the formula a little bit. Only the first example they did it. After that, they said, all right, you're good. Uh, I'll tell you what, because this one's a semicircle actually right here and right here, you know, we could actually find those other two values. Let's actually do that this, this time. We have a diameter, which makes this a semicircle. That means that this angle, this, excuse me, this arc right here is 180 minus 61, which is 119. I can actually find the value this time, so I'm going to. And then this one right here in this semicircle part of it's 111 and what's left with it right there that's 180 minus 111 which is 69 degrees right there 
So those two, 119 and 69, are the two intercepted arcs that are represented for this angle NPK that we're talking about right there. Of course, that's going to move with it. I was just so ready for that to happen. Okay, so those two together. So what's the measure of angle NPK? We take half of the measure of 119 plus 69. 188. I don't know why that took me so long. Uh, half, excuse me, half of 188, which is 94 degrees. I do believe. I know the, uh, the work is right. I don't know if the math is right. All right. Um, now we're moving on to some potentially new stuff here. It's no longer angles intersecting inside the circle. But what we are now looking at are things called tangent. Excuse me. I have an itchy nose lately. Things called tangent lines. Tangent lines are lines that intersect a uh, circle or a curve at exactly one point. So you see this one point that this line is hitting. Unlike a secant line, which would be, say, from B to C, that's a secant line because it hits the circle one, two points. But a tangent line is one that hits the circle at exactly one point. And the only point that I want to make about this is regarding still inscribed angles. You know I mentioned inscribed angles before, and I want to mention it again right here. This tangent line is actually, I'm actually the most extreme, but the farthest over that in this inscribed angle measure can go in this circle. And I'm calling it an inscribed angle because it's an angle on the circle. Both of its endpoints are the intercepting arc, or the intercepted arc of this thing right here. So Say this, in, they say this inscribed angle is just right here. Boom. Just kind of look at the blue in the circle. Here are the endpoints of the inscribed angle. Here's this intercepted arc. You see all that, right? That, that connection is there. That makes sense. So here's the intercepted arc, the inscribed angle. Boom. Okay. Now if I slide it, see, no matter where I slide it on the circle, the intercepted arc for that inscribed angle should remain the same. That means, boom, intercepted arc now goes right there, and it still fits on there. Now, how far can I go in any which direction? Well, I can go as far as going tangent to the circle, which means hitting it at exactly one point on this one line. That means the angle and one of the endpoints for the intercepted arc are in the exact same place. That's kind of what it's telling you right here. So this intercepted arc is now showing right there, and it's the same thing. That's as far over as I can go before it's no longer an inscribed angle, because now I'm doing something like this. That's no longer angles on the circle in that kind of way, right? That, that that hit beyond its extreme right there, but this still is. Why am I calling all that out? Well, because we're going to see a lot of them. And also because it's still an inscribed angle. And I think that's the end point, as you can say. This is an inscribed angle. And guess what? So was this one. This guy right here, this angle is an inscribed angle because that's another tangent line. That's another tangent line. Its intercepted arc is this major arc here, AEC, that whole thing. That poor thing, that whole thing right there. So what do we gotta find? We gotta find the measure of angle BCD. Now that is the angle with the intercepted arc of 112 degrees. The angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc, which is 56 degrees. And then the measure of angle ABC. So they're asking for this one. So this is gonna be half the measure of its intercepted arc right here. You have two options for this one because this is, they don't have the arc right here, but it's everything that's not 112 that makes up all 360. So um, this guy here, this is 360 minus 112, which is 248. So this is going to be half of 248, which is 124. That's one option. The other option is how is that going to go about saying this? Um, it's it, it's probably not worth mentioning, but 124 plus 56 is 180. That That's kind of what I was going to get at here, was that if both of these intercepted arcs complete the circle, then half of these complete 180 degrees. That's kind of all I was going to say. I don't think that's really a good tangible approach. What we just did was fine. Okay, uh, find each measure. Use the figure for exercises 9 and 10. So find the measure of angle X, Z, W. Now my, uh, it's not showing up here. My natural inclination was going to say this is a diameter passing through the center. And actually that would have been 90 degrees. Actually, you know what? It is 90 degrees. I, we didn't know it passes through the center, but we do know right here, this is a semicircle. Okay. 
So this is a semicircle right here, which means both of these, this, this angle right here and this angle right here are both those tangent angles or angles with the tangent, inscribed angles with the tangent line, which means they both share the same intercepted arc right there, apparently. Um, they share the same intercepted arc of 180 degrees and half of that is 90. So this is half of 180, which is 90 degrees. And yeah, there's a thing for uh, a radius or I guess a diameter that intersects with a tangent line does intersect at indeed 90 degrees. And that's what that is. All right, measure of angle Y, X, Z. And you know what? This is the exact same thing right there. Like this 40 is a total decoy. It's not really used for anything. Measure of angle Y, X, Z is right here. It's also 90 degrees, not because it looks it, because its intercepted arc is still this semicircle right here. So it's still half of 180, it's still 90 degrees. 40 is throwing you off, but if you want to do something with it, and it's going to, that's 80 degrees, and I'm going to 260, and there's 100 degrees, and there's nothing we can do with those. Okay, let's move forward. See, we're making good, we're making good time. All right, uh, give me one moment, I'm going to clear these things out find the value of x so now what we're looking at are angles that intersect outside of your circle but the lines still intersect with the circle in some way now there are three different kinds that we're looking at and i'll tell you what none of them are any different from one another um when it comes to writing a formula i guess perhaps people can see it written different ways but they all represent the same thing i have an angle that you know, you could treat it as an inscribed angle the same way I did the others, that if I moved it literally as an angle on the circle itself, that it had some intercepted arc measure at some point. And because the angle never changed when I move it, that means this intercepted arc measure is exactly double this, this angle right here. So how can this intercepted arc be represented when now I have a bigger version of an intercepted arc like this right there? Well, everything that was gained right here, everything that was gained right there, is what we can take away is what we can take away from there to get what's left in green and that's it so unlike the inside where we take half the sum of uh in intercepted arc and its vertical angle pairs intercepted arc now we're going to take the difference this 170 isn't the intercepted arc for what would be the inscribed angle it should be something smaller we'll have to take away this measure right here and they show x degrees guys that is the angle i'm just going to assume it's the angle that is the angle we need to find the arc measure here to help us find that out so uh i'll write out the formula thing with it thereafter but we got to find this by saying these three add up to 360 degrees if i called it y for example um so 360 minus the sum of 170 plus 135 is 360 minus 305 which is 55 or 55 degrees so this is 55 degrees right here so if you take the 170 subtract the 55 from there that'll represent the intercepted arc if this were lying on the circle like an inscribed angle so the measure of x x is half of 170 minus 55 not plus was half of 115, which is 57.5 degrees right there. Number 12. Now, this problem is no different from this one here. This one had a tangent line and a secant line. This one has two tangent lines. Nothing changes as far as what this thing would do if I moved it in as an inscribed angle. It would just be a smaller version right there with this intercepted arc. But now that we back this thing up back to here, the intercepted arc here grew and this newly intercepted arc was formed we're going to do this minus this and then half of that and then you get the angle here so x is half of that now what's this guy well both these add to 360 so 360 minus and i think there's a different way to write out this formula I, i'm positive there is um but 360 minus because this is going to kind of come there, there must be something else. I got to think about it. Uh, 360, I did I did this kind of stuff like eight years ago. 360 minus 140 is 220. Um, so this guy out here is 220. Now we're going to do 220 minus 140. So we're going to take that. So half of 80, which is 40 degrees right there. So the 220 is the big guy minus the 140 right there. And then you get what the intercepted arc would have been if it was an inscribed angle. And half it's 40. 
Okay, and last one, we're kind of in that same bit as before. Uh, we have a 20 degree one right here. We need the X right here. We're gonna have to figure out what this one is to do half of this minus that to get the X degree mark. Um, so this is, well, this is a semicircle right here. That includes the 20. So 20 plus 104 plus this unknown is going to be 180. So 180 minus the sum of 20 and 104 is going to be that angle or that arc, excuse me, 180 minus 124, which is 56. So this is 56 degrees right there. So X, that angle measure X is half the difference of 56 and 20. Half of 36, and that's 18 degrees. And that's our smart X's. Okay, moving forward. I forget how many problems I'm going to be doing overall. I'm going to skip this real world one, just keep moving forward. Complex drawings, ahoy. I think we have, I think we have five more problems to do. Okay, 20 minutes in, not bad. All right, find the measure of arc P at. This is where drawings can get a little more complex. You just gotta look at what you think you need to know. All right, the measure of arc P n is what we need to find right here. Now, what I do notice is, as we have these two lines right here, kind of these chords, I should say, right there, and especially in the section that we're given in, we have this angle measure at 79, and we know that 79 is going to be half the sum of this arc Pn and this arc Jk. We'll both these together. So um, I'm going to kind of say it in different, well, I'm going to write this out first. The uh, measure of angle, I'm going to write it out with letters and then go from there. Measure of angle PQn is half that of measure of angle arc Pn, the one we're trying to find, plus the measure of angle arc Jk. So you know what we're looking at and looking for. I'm going to substitute here. So 79 degrees is half that of the measure of angle arc PN plus the measure of angle arc JK, which is 48. Now, the way that I would try and solve this from here is we know that this angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc, but that also means the sum of the measures of the intercepted arcs is double that of the 79. So let's double, let's multiply both sides by two. Cancel that part out, double the 79, and that's this is how I'm going to generally write these here on out if I'm trying to find an arc. If I'm trying to find an arc and it's half, you take half the arcs measured to get the angle bit, well, let's double them outright. Let's skip the step where you have a half thing. Let's double them and, you know, move from there. Double 179 is 158. And a measure of arc PN plus 48. You know, the rest of this is algebra. Once I have it set up, the rest is algebra, so you're like, oh, how'd you do that? Well, algebra, subtract 48 from both sides here, 110 degrees. Use your answer, okay, let's write 110. Use your answer to part A to find the measure of arc Kn. Let's see what that's looking like. So we got 110 right there. Measure of arc Kn is this guy right here. Looks like this is all that remains for 360 degrees among all of these. That's why the 110 helps us. So we can do 360 minus the sum of 48, 86, and 110. And that's going to be the measure of arc k n. I keep thinking I'm going to say arcane. Arcane in my head. 360 minus, oh, don't make me do math. Uh, 94, 134, 244 which is, I'll take me to do more math, 106, no, 116, 116 degrees. Okay, I believe that's what it is right there. Sorry if I'm wrong. But all these should add to 360, and that's where we're trying to find the measure of arc N. Okay, find the measure of arc DE. So DE is this guy right here. Um... Uh, what am I looking at here? So this part, we don't know FG. We have this 89. Oh, I can't tell you where the 89 is. I, I'm going to venture the guess that it's supposed to be this angle right here. And I mentioned that for one of two ways. Number one, I don't know how else I could find DE. Oh, I guess, I well, I guess if this was 89, then I could do the uh, thing. This can't, well, okay. This, this is probably 89 for three reasons. Number one, it looks like it is. It looks like it's almost 90 degrees. Number two, if this were, um, excuse me, if this were 89, then its intercepted arc wouldn't be 137. It would be 178. Uh, number three, despite the fact this doesn't look like it right here, if this became 
178 or whatever it is, it would be too big for the overall making this 360. So it's got to be this thing right here. They want to find the measure of arc DE. If you notice right here, it's these two lines right there that intersect where you have DE as an intersecting arc, an intercepted arc, and then 61 right here is the other intercepted arc outside of it here. So this is one of those ones where I'm going to say, if I double the 89 degree angle, if I double it, it will become the sum of the measure of arc DE, my unknown, with the measure of arc HG, which is 61. Again, these are the two intercepted arcs for that kind of secant line thing. Here's that angle right there, and that's what we're digging with, uh, dealing with. 178 is measure of arc DE plus 61. So the measure of arc DE is 117. And just like last time, I'll write that down. I um, might have to use it. 117 degrees. Yeah, use your answer to part A to find measure of angle F. Okay, so measure of angle F is this guy right here. Why are they asking us to get that? Because this can help us find FG, excuse me, EG. And this thing, as you see it extend out more and more, you can see the two intercepted arc portions that form from it. There's the 137 right here, and there's the EG right here. And before, on the previous problem, we did half the sum, or double the angles of the sum. Now we're going to say that half the difference of these represents the angle. So the measure of angle F is, oh, we still need to find EG, I'm sorry. Let's first find the measure of EG and then we'll go from there. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So EG is going to be all that's not these guys to make 360. So uh, uh, measure of arc EG is 360 minus the sum of 117 plus 137 plus 61, which is 360 minus three fifteen, which is 45. I, I could be wrong. So measure of angle F is, um, excuse me, if you double the measure, uh, no. Measure of angle F is half that of the difference of 137 and 45. So that is half of 92, which is 46 degrees. And that's the measure of angle F. If I'm correct, I have no idea. There it is. All right, number 17. MS is parallel to PQ. Now, if you notice, PQ is also a tangent line here. Measure of angle PNS is 50 degrees. P, oh, it's measured. It's marked. PNS is 50 degrees. Find each measure. All right, we are going to find the measure of arc PR. So PR is an inscribed tangent angle, if you will, that's this guy right here. Uh, where do I want to go with this? This is 50 degrees right here, and they say the lines are parallel. So this is an alternate interior angle with this guy, which means this is 50 degrees right there. Okay, measure of arc LR is 170 degrees. That's this whole thing right here. That's 170 degrees. Now the way, I don't know if there's another way to kind of talk about doing it. There's no reason for me to know that these two are congruent to each, they might be, I have no idea. There's no reason to know these two are congruent to each other as far as I'm concerned. They don't say this is like an isosceles triangle and anything like that. But what I do know is that if this inscribed angle right here is 50 degrees, it's intercepted arc right here is 100 degrees. It should be double that of the 50. And that's important because 100 plus 170 right there is all that's not the measure of arc PR. The measure of arc PR is going to be 360 minus the sum of 100 and 170, or 360 minus 270, which is 90 degrees. So yeah, those aren't the same right there. So that's 90 degrees, which means the measure of angle not that they need it, the measure of angle RPQ would have been 45 degrees. So these are not the same right there. No reason to assume that they were. And that's the way I'm going to go with the problem. I there, there could have been another way, but it started with, you know, when they mentioned parallel here, I would say, well, where do I go with that? And in parallel lines presented alternate interior angles 
that are congruent right there at 15, 15. All right, measure of arc LP. Oh, we already, well, I found that. That's, that's uh, 100 degrees, which makes me wonder if there was another way to do this problem that I really should explore a little bit more. Uh, uh, oh. Oh. I'll tell you what I thought I was going to do, but I don't know if I can. Anyway, uh, 100 degrees for this one. Um, I was going to mention, let me, I'm going to erase some stuff here. I was going to mention here that, well, this angle of 50, oh goodness, this angle of 50 right here, it's going to be half the difference of these two. But boy, I don't think that's enough to go off of to represent something to get PR. Because PR still isn't even that arc right there. And you can't just assume that what's lost there is what's put there. I don't know. I, I don't know if I could have figured it out from that. So I found LP first before finding that. I don't know if that was the intent or not. There, there must be another way that I don't really see. All right, I'm doing just one more problem here. Number 20, and there are five little parts, but they, may, they let me go fast. Use the circle with center J. Match each angle or arc on the left with its measure on the right. Indicate a match by writing the letter for the angle or arc on the line in front of the corresponding measure. So if this is angle BAE, then it's angle BAE. Okay, angle BAE. Let's hunt it down. Well, I'm going to tell you right now what this one is. I think this is the first time it kind of shows up. BA in a, as a line is a tangent line. When this, we talked about this before, a diameter or a radius, a point from the center to a tangent, uh, intersects with a tangent line, is going to create a 90 degree angle. And it's the reason that we saw before. It constructs a semicircle right there, right? Constructs a semicircle right there. There's another way that I've talked about in the past, a tire on the road. It's only touching at the very, you know, at that one point as a right angle. Um, but that one's a right angle right there. That's 90 degrees. So angle BAE, should say measure of angle BAE, measure of angle BAE. Oh, with, with its measure. No, it's the angle and there is its measure. Okay. I'm telling you to use this kind of information for other things. We'll see what. Uh, that one's good. All right, angle ACD. Well, that angle's not on here. I see ACD, but that's but that's not on here. Um, I, because I mean, this this isn't on here. I'm gonna save that just because I don't know if there's a drawn typo, if there's a misdraw or whatever. I'm not saying we can't answer it. Well, I, actually, I don't know if we can. Uh, I'm gonna save that one. Arc AF right here oh well we might need acd actually they might think that it's supposed to go through oh i get it i get it i get it the, the center is j this this is not point c this is okay i'm gonna go back this is not point c acd is right here this is point c this is point j okay that's fine okay so acd right here we're now trying to find that that angle so what i would do what's 11 this this guy right here um let me let me explore this one for a sec this is where i need to be creative and be at pause what i'm looking to possibly do is some form of like we see how these lines here if this is the angle we're trying to find it would be half the sum of this and this but i don't know the measure of arc ad right now we don't know this guy right here but can we find it? Uh, what's the 11 going to do? Oh, I know, I know, I know, here we go. Okay, remember when I said that we could use this right angle? We're going to right here. This is a right triangle right there. That's a right triangle. Now this is 90 degrees, this is 11, and this is all the rest that makes 180 in this right triangle, or this plus 11 should be 90 right here. So the measure of angle ACF Let's start with that. Measure of angle ACF, this guy right there, that's 90 minus 11 because 
that plus one is 90. So that's me 79 degrees right here, right there. So that's 79 degrees. Measure of angle ACD is 180 minus that, which should be 101. 101 degrees. So that is this guy right here. Okay. And I honestly, I think that's the only place that we can really use that. So that's that. And that's 101. Okay. Now let's go to arc AF. Now the way that I'm going to do arc AF is if I can get arc AD, that would be helpful right here. Cause then I could say all these will add to 360 uh, with this. And then this is all that's left of the, you know, the 360 right there. So let me hide this stuff away here. Um, AD, the, here's where you can now use the angle here. If you double that 101 degree angle, that will equal the sum of arc AD, what we don't know, and 120, right? This angle here is half the sum of these two. So if you double this, it's the sum of those two right there. So that's 202. And subtract 120. Measure of arc AD is 82. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say it's not on there. That's not that we're not done. So that's 82 degrees right there. So 82, 98, and 120. And then there's the measure of arc AF. So measure of arc AF is 360 minus the sum of all of those 82, 98, and 120. Again, there may be other ways to go about that, but that's uh well, you know what I actually, you know what? I could have used the uh, 79 that we still had here and done the exact same thing with this 98 and this RKF. Sorry. I because I erased it, I kind of forgot that we had it. So 360 minus I think I just felt like oh I really needed that. So 360 minus 180 300, which is 60. Okay, yeah, I could have um I could have used the 79 that we already had right here and said if I double 79, that would be the sum of AF and 98. Doubling 79 gives us 158. 158 equals 98 plus 60, right? That's the 60 there, 98 plus 60. Okay, sorry about that. All right, I told you I haven't done these before. Angle AED, and I feel like I need all the things from before. So angle AED, all right, this one, okay, well, at least now I have the 82. This is good. So AED is straight up an inscribed angle right here. Its intercepted arc is 82. So measure of angle AED is half 82 degrees. We already have the 82, so that's 41 degrees. And the last one, therefore, must be 180. Let's check it out. Um, uh, arc ADE, yeah, well, that's a semicircle. Okay, because there's the center uh, J that it goes through. Arc AD, that's the easiest one. And that one's 180 degrees. All right, that's the last one that we're ending up on right there. So you can see where drawings can kind of go into the fold and screw you up. What's really problematic is when you can't tell what's pointing to what, and sometimes when you're not sure when they want you to do something with something else. I, You know, I'm looking at this problem still, and I, I can't see how I get this one I might have to look at it more but I can't see how to get this one before excuse me yeah before getting this straight up right I got the 100 first when we first did the problem all right that'll do it for this one guys this is Mr. Robinson thank you so much for watching take care I will see you in the next one